you guys are ready to hear the word. I hope that you guys are ready. Just want to pause that so that way we can end with that song. Amen. Glad for you guys to be here to join us tonight. We're coming to you live from our home in Turlock, California. Um, just a little bit of an update. Um, things seem to be going pretty good. Amen. Um, God is definitely still in the midst. Um, we are still searching for a church, kind of just waiting to see what God, you know, what doors op God opens just so that, uh, you know, we have a place to go as a family. Uh, right now, we may not have opened up over here the same way you guys have over there in Imperial County, but that's okay. Our time will come. Amen. So tonight, I want to talk to you about an interesting subject. Amen. First, just want to give out a little shout out to Sister Rosie Lopez, Sister Karen Hernandez, Roxanne Yvette, Amanda Elaine Boatman. Um, I thought I seen Art and Shirley. Amen. Pastor Art and Sister Shirley. Um, not sure who else is on tonight, but I welcome you. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Tonight, we want to talk about having a heart of stone. And many of you may already know what this is talking about when it's talking about having a heart of stone. But I'm going to give you a scripture to back it up. Amen. And it comes from Ezekiel chapter 36. And we're going to be in verses 26 through 27. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Amen. Now, why would God tell you that he has to give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you? Well, maybe for one reason, you may have the type of heart that wants to go after what your heart wants. You may be a Christian and you may believe in Jesus Christ, but that does not mean that your heart beats after the Lord's. See, because if your heart beats after the Lord's, then you are a person that wants to walk according to his will. You're a person that wants, wants to walk in his statutes and his commands. Amen. And truth be told, you may have a stubborn heart. Now, I want to give you the definition of stubbornness. Amen. Stubbornness is the quality of of being determined to do what you want and refusing to do nothing else. You ever met someone like that? That no matter how hard you try to make them a team player, to make them a person that can enjoy not only their work, their ministry, but they're just that type of person that just has to do it their way. You know what I mean? You ever met somebody like that? That's kind of hypocritical. Like they'll ask you for ideas that you might have. And then when you give them the idea, they shut it down anyway. And they still end up doing what they want to do. That is a stubborn heart. You know what I mean? But to be politically correct, they will ask people what they think. But in the end... They will not only make it seem like your idea was not even worth hearing, but all along you already knew because you've gotten to know this person that they're going to do things their way. That is a stubborn heart. That is why God would have to give this person a new heart and put a new spirit in them. And do you want to know why? Because not only do they have a stubborn heart, but they've got a controlling spirit. Amen. That's why God says in Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27, I will remove from you your heart of stone. Now, why is it a heart of stone? Now think about this. Okay. You've got something that's very hard, like a fist, right? What could go into that fist? 
Nothing. And if you've got a heart of stone, do you think anything can go into it? No. Nothing goes into and nothing comes out of a heart of stone. So think about this. A heart of stone could also be a person that is not accepting of love, accepting of companionship, but at the same time, because they don't accept those things, they also don't give them. You know what I mean? Having a heart of stone does not benefit you, brothers and sisters. A heart of stone is something that is very serious and it doesn't just only have to do with stubbornness, but that is one of the main things that I wanna talk about tonight. And why do I say that they are stubborn? Well, let's go to Zechariah chapter seven and we're gonna be in verses one through 13. It says, but they refused to pay attention. Stubbornly, they turned their backs and covered their ears. Amen? It's 11 through 13. Sorry, not 1 through 13. But they refused to pay attention. Stubbornly, they turned their backs and covered their ears. They made their hearts as hard as flint and would not listen to the law or to the words that the Lord Almighty had sent by his spirit through the earlier prophets. So the Lord Almighty was very angry. When I called, they did not listen. So when they called, I would not listen, says the Lord Almighty. They refused to pay attention. You know, a lot of people claim to be broke these days, right? A lot of people say, you know, that they don't have enough income to live on and things like that. It don't cost you very much to pay attention. But we act like if the Lord is a debt collector, you know what I mean? And we refuse to pay. And all he is asking for is our attention. And if you pay just a little bit of attention to even these sermons or even his word, as you would read it, you pay just a little bit of attention you're going to find out what makes the Lord's heart beat. You're going to find out what pleases him. You're going to find out what gets the Lord excited. Amen. But in these things that I'm reading right here, he's talking about people who are stubborn. He's talking about people that made their heart this way. Some people claim I've always been this way. No, you developed this bad habit of not letting nothing in your heart and nothing out of your heart. You've also become unteachable. You don't want nobody telling you what you need to learn. You don't want nobody trying to teach you something that you need to see or, or your eyes to be opened. You want to proclaim like you already know everything. You know what I mean? And that is also a stubborn heart. It says they refuse to pay attention. That tells me that it's a matter of choice. Paying attention or not paying attention is not something that, that you could pray for and then God just magically flips a switch in your heart and all of a sudden, you're no longer stubborn. You know, you're praying for something that you're asking God to remove from your life, but it's you that holds on to the stone. It's you that has that hardened heart. See, if you're going to allow him to give you this new heart, and they put this new spirit in you, then you've got to allow him to break you. You've got to allow his word to break through that hardness of your heart, that stubbornness of you not wanting to learn. And I know it's a hard message, amen? I know this is something that is not easy for you to listen to, but it's something that you really do need to understand, amen? See, he says, they refuse to pay attention and stubbornly, they turned their backs and covered their ears. Isn't that a little bit immature? I think of a little kid when I, when, I, when I read that. I think of a little kid that said, no, I'm not going to do that. And they turn their back from their parents and they cover their ears so that they can hear your instruction. They can hear what you are saying. You know what I mean? It's very immature, right? But for a little kid, it comes natural because sometimes they want to explore. They want to do the opposite of what their parents say. Our most famous word is no. And what do they do even more? 
They go and do the exact thing that we say not to do, right? They stubbornly turn their backs and cover their ears. But for us adults or for us that are supposed to be mature Christians, what's our excuse? Why are we turning our backs? And we may not see it that way, but let me tell you how simple it is. You may not be physically turning your back on God, but the minute that you do otherwise from what he asks of you, and the minute that you do the opposite of his word, it's as good as you turning your back. And you refusing to listen, it's as good as you covering your ears. So no matter which way you put it, your heart, your heart might be as hard as flint. You won't listen to the law. You won't listen to the teachings. You won't listen to the sermons. You know what time these sermons are on Saturday. You may purposely not want to tune in. When the notification comes up, you might dismiss it. Or you might even say and turn off all the notifications that come your way when it's time to listen to the word of God. Amen. Maybe you think you've got it all figured out. Maybe you think you don't need any help. I don't know. That'd be between you and the Lord. But it says that the Lord Almighty had sent by his spirit through the earlier prophets. So the Lord Almighty was very angry. Do you think the Lord still gets angry with stubborn people? Do you think the Lord still gets angry with people who do not listen, who refuse to pay attention? Of course he does. He says, when I called, they did not listen. Think about the last time that the Lord called on you for whatever reason. And it could be something as simple as you were driving down the street and the Lord told you to stop and, and say a word of encouragement to somebody. Or to give a cup of cool water to somebody on a hot summer day. And maybe you were just too in a hurry. You know what I mean? He says, when I called, they did not listen. So when they called, I would not listen says the Lord Almighty. Jeremiah chapter seven, verses 23 through 24. But I gave them this command, obey me and I will be your God and you will be my people. Walk in obedience to all I command you that it may go well with you. You know, there's quite a bit of people where things are not going quite so well and you wonder why. Well, you got to stop to think on how hard of a heart that they might have. Some people are just bent on doing things their own way. Some people are bent on traveling down paths that God already told them to stay off of. You know what I mean? And some of them just choose to learn the hard way rather than listening to the wisdom of others who've already been there, who've already done that. That is the whole purpose of testimony, brothers and sisters. You know, you might be thinking that it's only to bring honor and glory to God. But no, testimonies are so crucial and they're so important. And they don't only come on Testimony Tuesday or Testimony Wednesday. Testimonies don't even have to be announced as a testimony. In just an everyday conversation where you are talking to somebody and you say, Man, do you know what the Lord did just this very week in my life? That is a testimony. If you were praying for a breakthrough and God came through and something broke through inside of you, you know what I mean? Then you would testify. You would share what it is that God has done. And that is giving your testimony. You're testifying to what God is doing in your life. You're testifying as to something that took place. Amen. But see, there's good testimony. And there's also bad testimony. And you can learn from both of them. It doesn't only have to be a good testimony. You can learn from a bad testimony. It's just that the bad testimonies are few and far between. Not a lot of people want to admit when they make mistakes. Not a lot of people want to admit when they go the opposite direction of where God told them to go. You know what I mean? But when they do, if they were to come back and share... And say, look, I know where I messed up. God told me to go this way and I refused. I stubbornly turned my back on that command and I went the opposite way. And if you were to share what those consequences were, the things that you endured, the things that you went through, 
in the course of your disobedience or going the opposite way, then you are testifying to not only your disobedience, you're testifying to the heart of stone that you had at the moment or possibly still have. But you're also testifying that yes, you make mistakes and you are giving a bad testimony, but you are turning it for something good. Amen. But hopefully the end of the testimony results in and then God opened my eyes or then a light bulb went off inside of my head or I was listening to a sermon or I spent some time in prayer and God revealed to me. Now that's when the testimony turns into something great. You know what I mean? Because it was a breakthrough. But see, if you're a person that doesn't allow God to give you that new heart. And to give you that new heart, there's got to be some revealing of where you go wrong. And how can that even happen if you yourself stubbornly refuse to study? You purposely are too busy to tune in to these messages. You're too much of an excuse maker to show up to church right now, right? Claiming that it's the fear of COVID, right? But there's no difference in going to work, is there? There's no difference in going to Walmart, is there? There's no difference in going to Costco, is there? If you're stepping foot out of your house, you're stepping foot and you're going somewhere. But let me make it very plain to you. You have faith enough to go to the store where there are people that don't follow the six feet apart, where there are people that don't wear masks, where people that are sick do walk into the store. You know what I mean? You're choosing to put more faith in that and take more of a risk in that than to walk through the doors of the church that you claim that you can't wait to get back into that you can't wait to feel the presence of God again, but yet you have still yet to arrive or to make plans to be in church. So you have more faith in going to the store and putting your life at risk with people who are already stubborn rather than a room full of majority obedient people that are following the instructions of the ushers at the door, allowing their temperatures to be taken, pumping that sanitizer into their hand, keeping their social distance and sitting a few chairs away from other people, allowing themselves to follow instruction. You need to sit right here, brother. You need to sit right here, sister. You know what I mean? Think about that. They refuse to pay attention. Stubbornly, they turn their backs and cover their ears. Spiritually, how many of you would be honest and say, Pastor, right now I am living in a life of nothing but stubbornness. My heart is covered in concrete. And there may be reasons why your heart is hard. You know what I mean? But tonight I would like for you to allow the Lord to break through that heart of stone. Allow the word of God to penetrate, to be that drill that breaks through that concrete. Allow God to give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Amen? Why can't tonight be that night? Why can't this moment right here, right now be the time that you say, God, forgive me. I'm tired of fighting you. Why can't tonight be that moment? Because stubbornly, you'd like to take another day another day and another day to remain the same person that you've been for quite some time. Jeremiah 7, 23, but I gave them this command, obey me and I will be your God and you will be my people. Walk in obedience to all I command you that it may go well with you. See, things will go well with you when you follow instruction. Things will go well with you when you do all the things that God commands you to do and you act as if it's so hard and it's really not hard. 
Watch. Let me show you how easy it is. God says, don't lie. So what should be your response when God says, are you going to lie? No, Lord. See how simple that was? Lord, I will not lie. Lord, I will follow your truth because the truth shall set me free. Look how simple it is. And when God gives you an instruction, don't go this way. Yes, Lord, I won't go that way. God, you don't need to explain it to me. I've already learned over my time, Lord. I've already learned enough lessons, Father God, that I don't need to go the opposite direction of where you don't want me to go. Lord, I'm ready to stay going this way. As long as you keep giving the instruction, Father God, that's what I'm going to follow because you've never stirred me in the wrong direction. And I challenge you tonight. How many of you can say that God steered you in the wrong direction? How many of you would be willing to admit that you yourself and your stubborn choices, your own stubborn heart, that heart of stone and that controlling spirit that just had to do things their own way is what caused you to go through those consequences. How many of you would be willing to admit it tonight? See, because admitting it, confessing it is the first step in recovery. You know what I mean? It's the first step in, in, in receiving that mercy and receiving that forgiveness. Admitting that you have a heart of stone, then God can begin to work on you. You know what I mean? Then God can begin to change your heart and to put that new spirit in you. Amen. But not if you don't got a, a heart of obedience. He says to all that I command you walk in obedience that it may go well with you. But they did not listen or pay attention. Instead, they followed the stubborn inclinations of their evil hearts. Watch this. They went backward and not forward. Spiritually, if we were to look at the majority of people in church today, and we've got people who think they're being obedient, and we've got people who are being obedient. You know what you would see if you were, if God was to open your eyes and remove the blindness? You know what you would see spiritually? You would see a whole bunch of people going in different directions. You would see people going forward and you see a whole bunch of people going backward. And they're drifting further and further and further away. You see going forward, you see going backward. You know what I mean? And spiritually, this is what you would see. And the people going backwards would accuse the ones going forward that they're leaving them behind or that they're making it a competition. And there's no competition about it. It's just that they choose to obey. They choose to follow the instruction. They choose. And so you notice why they're ahead. They're not ahead because they're sprinting. They're not ahead because they're any better than you. But they did make a quality choice to love the Lord their God with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their strength, and with all their soul. Amen. Where you, on the other hand, may be that person that's sliding backward, moving backwards, and it's because of the stubbornness of your heart. It's because of that flint, that hardness that you've got of where you already know everything. You know what I mean? They went backward and not forward. Look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. See, he can't heal somebody that refuses to say that they've got a problem. He can't heal somebody or mend them back together or put things back the way they should be for somebody that refuses to admit that there needs to be some work done on them. And that's how stubborn people are. They refuse to admit they even make mistakes. You know what I mean? They refuse to admit that they even walk in the wrong direction at times. You know what I mean? I want you, for those of you that have ever worked with a shovel, to look at your hand, okay? 
Look at your hand, okay? I'm gonna show it to you right here. Look at your hand and look around here in this direction right here and, and feel for those little parts of skin right there that are real hardened. That's called a callus, okay? Now, honestly, if you're like me, sometimes when I get bored, I pick at this callus right here. But I can pick at it and pick at it. I can even use a little pin if I want to to pick at it and try to remove that dead skin because I can't feel it. And so when God says that their heart has become calloused, it means that they can no longer feel. That's what a callous around a heart feels like. You could literally be poking at it with the word of God. You could be trying to break through that concrete. They can't feel it. They can't sense it. You know why? They may even be saying amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But they're just a parrot. They can just mock what you're saying, but they don't feel nothing because their hearts have become calloused, just like the callous on our hand. You can poke at it. You can pick at it. You can be constantly trying to remove it, but they ain't going to get through. There's no feeling in there. That's what calloused, parts that are calloused are. There's no feeling anymore. There's people's hearts have become calloused, he said. They hardly hear with their ears. And they closed their eyes. See, these are the attributes of having a callous heart. You automatically hardly hear with your ears. There might be some selective hearing going on where you might enjoy a, a sermon about prosperity. But sermons like this, you don't want to turn tune into. You know what I mean? So you hardly hear with your ears. Another thing that comes hand in hand with your heart being calloused is that you have closed your eyes and, and, and it's an act of arrogance. L let me prove it to you. When you're talking to somebody and they're like, right? I wonder how many of you guys caught that or if you turned away from the screen that you missed it. Watch, let me do it one more time. You're talking to somebody and they act like they're all interested, but then they close their eyes and then they kind of roll, you know what I mean? They have closed their eyes. It, doesn't that look arrogant? Doesn't that look like somebody that I could care less what you're saying? Because either way, I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna be about me. It's all about what I need to do because ain't nobody else going to take care of me. You ever heard somebody like that, that they keep moving their head in those kind of gestures, you know what I mean? And pardon what I'm about to say, but do you know how stupid you look when you're stubborn like that? And the person on the other end is trying their best to love you, even though you are acting unlovable at the moment. You are refusing to receive the wisdom of a person that has already been there, has already done that, has already looked themselves in the mirror and realized how stupid they once looked. They know the consequences of stubbornness. They know the consequences of disobedience. And so they are sharing their testimony. They are sharing their story with you. They are taking time out of their lives to share with you and, and kind of give you the roadmap so that you don't head that same way. And if that's not love, then I don't know what is, guys. Especially if that person will continue to pursue you, continue to share that with you every time they see you and they call you and they let you know these things. You know what I mean? That is love. No matter how unlovable you are, no matter how stupid you might look with your eyes and going like this, you know what I mean? With all your arrogance of thinking that you know everything, you know what I mean? And yet, faithfully, these brothers and these sisters will gladly draw you a roadmap of all the potholes and the path that you are taking and start, try to steer you in the direction of heading toward Jesus and obedience so that it may go well with you. You know what I mean? If for a second you were to allow the Lord to give you that new heart and to give you that new spirit, one that will submit, one that will listen, one that has some eyes that are wide open, that is open 
to receive everything that God has for you, whether it comes in the way of instruction, whether it comes in the form of a blessing, no matter what the case may be, a willing, submissive person has no problem doing exactly what they are told. Why? Because they know that it's not only going to benefit them, but it's also going to benefit everybody else around them. It's called being a team player. Amen? Think about that, guys. Otherwise, you might see with your eyes, if you choose to allow God to give you this new heart, to give you this new spirit, you might see with your eyes, you might get your eyes open, you might get your ears open, then you might to gain a little bit of understanding, you know what I mean? Oh, that's what you're talking about, Lord. Oh, man. All I had to do was to get to a place where I know nothing. God, I'm a sponge. Fill me. You know, how many of you guys like that song by Jesus Culture? Fill me up, God. Now, do you realize how redundant it is to sing that song and God tries to fill you, but you refuse to be filled? Because you think you're already full, but you know what you're full of? Yourself. You know, I don't advise many people to empty themselves because I know that that is a form of, of meditation or, or whatever mantras or whatever they want to call them, okay? And I ain't going to give no glory or any kind of insight to that, but I am going to tell you this, that if you're going to empty yourself, empty yourself of yourself and be filled with the Spirit of God. And you can't be filled with the Spirit of God unless you are going to be willing to listen to obey and to allow him to break through that heart of stone that you have so that he can give you that new heart and put that new spirit in you. Amen. Now, notice that I kept saying new over and over and over. New heart, new spirit, new heart, new spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but if you just got a brand new car, right? New car, new car smell, new tires, new motor, new windows, new everything, right? Top of the line, brand new. And once you get used to driving and receiving that new car, why would you want to go back to an old car? You know what I mean? Especially with all the trouble, all the money you had to put into fixing things because it was already outdated. It was time for something new. Isn't it the same concept with your new heart and your new spirit? Why would you want to go back to being stubborn again? Why would you want to go back to having that spirit that wouldn't submit, that wouldn't learn, that wouldn't listen? You know what I mean? When you've already had what's brand new. Because I'm going to tell you something. Everything moving forward after that remains brand new. Not only are you that new person with a new heart and a new spirit, but God can only keep building on you. You know what I mean? You've got a foundation that God is building upon. And then you can teach others by sharing your testimony, your story of how at one time you were one of the most stubborn people on earth. You know what I mean? And you can literally show how did, how did that really benefit you? about the only thing good that came out of you being stubborn and you going through those trials and you going through those tribulations is that one day your eyes were opened and you realized that you weren't making any progress. You weren't getting anywhere. You were working harder, not smarter. I mean, God gives you all the attributes of what it takes to receive all the blessings that he has for you, but it don't come without obedience, guys. I'm sorry, it just don't. And I, I watch so many people that try to go out and chase after these blessings by saying the right things and pretending to do the right things. But inside, they're stubborn. They're disobedient. They want to live the way they want to live. They want to do the things that they want to do. And you can't teach somebody nothing like that. The testimonies could be right there in front of you. And they'll even admit those are powerful. Those are powerful testimonies. Yes, they are. But the way that they benefit you is if you learn from them. 
See, this is why I like to listen. I like to talk to people. I love to listen to people, especially when they tell me that they were headed down one direction and then God told them to turn the other direction. That's where you got my full attention. You know what I mean? When you're telling me something and God told me to do this, I can't wait for the next sentence that comes out of their mouth. You know what I mean? Because it's going to tell me whether or not they've already got this new heart or whether they've got this new spirit. Or if our conversation is going to steer towards, you ain't going to get anywhere until you get rid of that stubbornness. If they tell me, and I didn't listen to the Lord, then you know that the next parts of the story are going to be all the consequences of your bad choice. You know what I mean? And hopefully the story ends with, and God opened my eyes. God gave me a new heart. God gave me a new spirit. And I became submissive. And I came... He was able to guide me and able to lead me. I was no longer that person that refused to be led. You know what I mean? Romans chapter 2 verse 5. But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done. Amen. I'm going to stop right there and explain this to you. Because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart. Stubbornness and unrepentance go hand in hand. Because stubbornness refuses to admit that they are wrong. Re uh, stubbornness refuses to admit that they've even made a bad choice. Or that the, the path that they are on is even the wrong path. And so if there is no confession, then how could there be repentance? You know what I mean? So this is the word of God right here. It's telling the truth because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart. So now we're putting unrepentance into this equation. Okay. If you've already got the heart of stone, then there's no way that you're getting forgiven for the things that you are doing because you ain't confessing. And if you ain't confessing the things that you need forgiveness of, then you're storing up all this stuff in your life. And those are some pretty heavy burdens that you are carrying. Some pretty heavy trials, tribulations. I mean, circumstances, situations that honestly you yourself are putting yourself into. Amen. I bet you never think about it that way. You know, it doesn't take much for you to watch somebody and, and, and their story doesn't change. Pastor, I don't know what's going on. It feels like I can't get blessed. I just feel like I'm always struggling. I know why. You keep fighting against the Lord. You ask the Lord to lead you. And so then he takes you by the hand. But then you're like, no, don't pull me this way. You ask the Lord to, to be merciful to you. And then God says, okay, well, I need you to confess what you've done. Or what the areas in your life where, where, where you need work. I need you to realize it. I need you to confess it because you still think that, th that there's no work that needs to be done. And then you refuse. And God will send messages like this to kind of tug at your heart, to kind of get you to get to a place where you might admit something. You know what I mean? But sadly, I could tell you right now that at least five people have tuned out from the minute that they heard the title of this message. Started out with like 17, 18, we're down to 12 right now. Where'd those people go? What's so bad about this sermon? What's so bad about this word? What is it about me? Why would you go from tuning in and receiving something from God and then tuning out to scroll to something else? You know what I mean? That's why I pay attention to things like that. You know, you may think, well, it's just people. Maybe they had to go answer the phone or maybe they had to go do something. You mean to tell me that you couldn't give 30 minutes out of your life for the Lord? Now, I know what you're thinking. Don't be so judgmental, Pastor Bobby. How do you know they haven't been praying all day? If you had been, you would have known that God said you needed to be listening to this message. I know it's not only for those that have been faithful and that continue to listen week after week after week. I know that it was for those 17 people. I know that at times it could get all the way up to 30. But I could tell you right now that if tomorrow I was to come back online 
and I was to preach a message of prosperity, talking about God is going to bless you. And I couldn't even say it like with a fire behind me, you know what I mean? There'd be 50 to 60 people on there. There'd be like 700 comments, 700 amens. Man, he's a powerful preacher. But right now, oh, I don't like the way he preaches. And you don't have to say it with your mouth. Your actions are showing me. See, every time somebody logs on, it tells me that they're watching. And then when you go off, I no longer see that you're watching. So yes, a part of me even knows who those people are. And I could tell you that it's a group and it's the same group. So a part of me knows that that group right there is not ready to let the Lord break that heart of stone that they got. Now, I'm not going to call them out in public. I'm not going to say their names. But the Holy Spirit reveals to them. The Holy Spirit lets them know. But the sad part about all of this is that it's another day that they turn their back on the Word of God. They turn their back on the freedom that they could have had. They turn their back on receiving that new heart and that new spirit. And it's another day that they have deceived themselves into thinking that they're actually making progress but spiritually, they're moving backwards. And, and it's a sad, sad thing. It, it does break my heart. You know what I mean? Romans 2, 5. But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath. This is New Testament, guys. For those of you that think that only in the Old Testament God's wrath appeared, God's wrath still comes. But you know how it comes? It comes in the form of consequences. And those consequences is not something that he says, you deserve these consequences. You deserve these consequences. No, 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 no. It comes from your own stubborn choices. Amen? It says that his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. Do you see what it says right there? For those of you that think that seeking glory is something bad, listen to what the word of God said right here. To those who by persistence in doing good, that means you continuously want to keep pleasing the Lord. You want to be consistent in your preaching. You want to be consistent in going to the outreaches, feeding the homeless, and remaining on the path that God has for you. Amen? You do so to seek glory. There's nothing wrong with seeking glory. It doesn't mean it belongs to you. It's for the Lord. But you're seeking it. You're going after it. You're going after honor. You're going after immortality. And he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking. See, and the way that you'll know that you are self-seeking is when you refuse to go the direction that he tells you. And when are you going to open your eyes and open your ears to understand that he is trying to prevent you from even going down that hard path in the first place? But your stubbornness takes you the opposite direction. Your stubbornness takes you into those hard times. Your stubbornness takes you into the consequences, the situations, the circumstances that are caused by your own stubborn choices. You know what I mean? He's trying to give you the best. He's trying to tell you. He's trying to be that voice. That tells you, you won't have to look to the right or to the left. You will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. But when you've got that stubborn, calloused heart, you've got plugs in your ears. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. I can't sugarcoat it. I got to be honest with you. That's what you're doing. You're rejecting the truth. Five to six people tonight that had started out this telecast being on here rejected the truth and chose to go do something else. Chose to go find another itching message for their itching ears. Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock 
in pieces. So if you've got that stubborn heart, that rock, isn't his word like a fire that burns that up? Isn't his word like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? But here's the thing. If you refuse to show up, if you refuse to listen, if you refuse to study on your own, if you refuse to let the Lord open your mind and open your heart to his word, then when is there any time for the breaking? So think about this. You might still think that you're on the right path, but imagine carrying that heavy heart, the calloused heart, the stony heart, and God constantly wants to break it with his word and burn it, purify it with his fire, but you tune out. Amen? You tune out. You choose to think these are hard messages. I don't like the way he preaches. And it's not just me. See, no matter what you do, I can guarantee you tomorrow, no matter where you go to church, no matter what you listen to, you're going to hear a little bit of this message in that. And the reason will be because the message won't change. God loves you that much that he doesn't want you to keep on that same path. He wants to break that stony heart. He wants to break that rock in pieces. And he's not going to stop. When we started this telecast, we started, there's no shadow he won't light up. No mountain he won't climb up. Coming after you. Amen? So think about it. Why does he put it on my heart to keep preaching these hard messages? Because there's a remnant of people out there that still think that they're okay. They carry around these heavy hearts, these heavy stones. You know what I mean? And they refuse to let the word of God be that hammer. They refuse to work, let the word of God be that fire that purifies them. Amen. They refuse it. Second Timothy chapter four, verse three. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. What you're hearing tonight is sound doctrine. I challenge any single one of you guys to, to tell me that, it, that what I'm telling you tonight is not from the word of God. I mean, literally, I gave you the address. I'm reading it to you. I'm reading straight from the word of God right here. You know what I mean? It's sound. It's sound doctrine. Okay. Instead, to suit their own desires. That's where that self-seeking comes in. To suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers. Why? Because they think that the majority, if they have such a huge group of people that agree with them, right? Then they think they must be right. It only takes one servant of God that hears him so clearly that can stand alone in the midst of all that great number of people and still know that that person is right because of the sound doctrine and because of the voice of God. You know what I mean? The majority of people agreeing with each other doesn't mean that they have more power than the one person who chooses to follow what God says that chooses to allow him to break that heart of stone, that chooses to allow him to purify them. But I'm gonna tell you something, you will never get there if you don't allow God to break you, if you don't allow God to turn up the heat a little bit so that all your impurities could come up and float to the top so that he can skim them off. And then all you gotta do is choose never to return back to those consequences. All you gotta do is remember what you went through when you took the wrong turn. All you gotta do is remember how it felt when you did the opposite. You know what I mean? Think about that. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers. Notice that it says that these are teachers. Now, it doesn't mean that there's a whole bunch of pastors out there that are teaching the wrong stuff. Everybody's teaching nowadays. How, you know how many people I grow myself tired and weary with? Because trying to share with them the wisdom that God has given me through my experiences, through the lessons that I have learned when I took the wrong turn, it's like talking and you can't even get out a sentence. 
because they're like, I know, I know, I know, I know. And they're trying to teach me. They're trying to like tell me the opposite of what I am telling them. And man, it gets exhausting. But the fact that there are people out there saying the opposite of what the word of God says, what are they doing? They're teaching. And if they're teaching, then what are they? They're teachers. Amen. So there's some people out there that will surround themselves with this great number of teachers. But why? To say what their itching ears want to hear. See, nobody who wants to be justified in their choices and, and the things that they want for their own life. They don't want somebody telling them that that's not the path that they should go down. They don't want somebody telling them that what they put a lot of thought and effort into is actually wrong. They don't want resistance. This is why they would rather go with a whole bunch of other people going through the same thing that will all agree. You know what I mean? And, and a whole great number of them. And, and, and you know who sadly that they are teaching the majority of their teachings to? Their children. See, because wherever you are, your children are too. You know what I mean? Wherever you are with all your stubbornness, with all your unrepentance, with all your, you know, controlling spirit, that's where they are too. See, there's very few over here that are like, no, I've made mistakes and I definitely don't want to go down that road again. Oh no, I learned my lesson. I remember the pain. I remember the way I felt rejecting you, Lord. I remember how it felt walking in the opposite direction. It didn't feel good. I grieved you, Father God. And I don't want to feel that feeling again. It is a godly sorrow that fills your heart because you knew and you realized that you turned your back on him, that you were being rebellious and that you were fighting him, especially when he reveals to you your motives for doing so. There's a pain that comes along with it. Now, I'm not saying that God won't heal it. Of course he will, but not if you don't confess it. Not if you don't get to a place where you admit it. So if you're still that stubborn person, if you're still that person that believes that you're doing what's right and you're basing it off of your life like it's only getting better, your life can still get better in the form of a new job, in the form of a promotion, in the form of a little bit more money, you could win the lottery and then you'll think, oh, I got the favor of God. No, it's just life. The true blessings of God, besides the monetary blessings, besides the protection, besides all of that, how about when you pray and you take somebody that's sick and you take their hands in yours and you ask God on their behalf to bring a healing to their life. And then God heals them. Wouldn't that be such a huge blessing? How about when you come alongside somebody that you know is struggling. And they choose to listen to you. They choose to listen to the places that you've been. And the consequences that you went through. And so then they decide that they don't want to go down that same route. Because of your testimony, they don't want to go through that same thing. And so they get closer to you. They get to know you. And, and they, they actually want to be discipled by you. Isn't that a blessing? How about when you're praying for lost loved ones and you're asking God to open their eyes and open their ears. And one day their eyes are opened and their ears are open, And all of a sudden they don't have that stubborn, unrepentant heart anymore. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Think about that. Jeremiah chapter 23, and we're going to close with this, verses 16 through 22. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I want you to pay close attention tonight. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says you will have peace. And to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say no harm will come to you. This is talking about those teachers that are saying what your itching ears want to hear. Amen. See, the Lord and his word covers every aspect of what we are talking about tonight. Amen. They keep saying to those who despise me. Now, you wouldn't know somebody who despises God by their, by their voice. 
by their words because they could be somebody that says all the right things and in their appearance does all the right things, but you don't know what's deep inside of their heart. And so when they do come to you and they do say, man, I'm struggling. What are you struggling with? Well, you know, my husband is and, and I'm getting attention from this other gentleman and, and, and how do I know that person's not from the Lord? <laughs> and then say you tell them, the Lord says you're gonna have peace. That's a lie. You ain't gonna have peace because you're trying to justify why you wanna look outside of your marriage for some sort of comfort from someone else. And God don't want that. He don't. I don't care what you try to justify. I don't care how you try to put it. God does not want that. God did not send that person, no matter how much you have in common. And if you haven't learned by now, for you females that are watching this, if you haven't learned by now that there are a handful of gentlemen out there that can say the right things in the first few dates that you date, okay? They can, they can have all the right things in common with you. And yes, they could even call themselves a Christian. And you will say, this must be from the Lord. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're wearing a ring on your finger, if you made covenant before the Lord with your spouse, God did not send you that person. If you think in your mind that God was trying to tell you that you made a mistake the first time by making covenant with the person you made covenant with and this new person is someone he sent to break up this marriage, you're mistaken. And that one's for free. And I don't know who it's for. Amen. Don't accuse me of knowing what your story is because I'm hardly on Facebook anymore. And let me tell you something. I'm not in the Imperial Valley. So think about that. The Lord says... You will have peace and to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say no harm will come to you. Be careful when you're telling people that there won't be consequences for their ill choices. Be careful when you're telling people that they will have the peace of God, but they are going in the opposite direction. Be very careful when you're listening to somebody's story and you're listening to all the things that they are going through. If you listen hard enough, you're going to hear stubbornness. If you listen hard enough, you're going to hear disobedience. You're going to hear how how they're doing the opposite of what God is telling them. You're going to hear how their own stubborn hearts want to go the opposite direction. And be careful when you're telling them that God says they're going to have peace. You won't find me telling people that. You're not going to have peace until you do what God says. You're not going to have good consequences until you start making godly choices. Be careful when you're telling people that, that no harm will come their way. Warn them when they are disobedient. Warn them when they are unrepentant. Warn them when they are disobedient. Warn them and keep on warning them until you see a change. Until the testimony changes from all the bad stuff that's going on to the blessings of God. And you will know when somebody has favor. And you will know when somebody is being obedient to God. Because things just happen to work out. Things that you didn't have to lift a finger to do. Things that you didn't have to waste all your efforts and your strength into. All you had to do was make the right choice at the beginning. When God said, don't go this way, go that way. Amen. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? Who has listened and heard his word? See, the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a whirlwind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purpose of his heart. In days to come, you will understand it clearly. Look what he says right here in verse 21 of Jeremiah 23. He says, I did not send these prophets, yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them. Yet they have prophesied. And these are the people who are telling people, everything's going to be okay. God is going to be with you. No, because some people refuse to have God with them. Some people push the Holy Spirit away. And you know how they do it? They don't do it physically. They do it by doing the opposite of what he says. Now, he will never leave you nor forsake you. So yes, it is a fact that he is there. But you've trained yourself not to hear him. You've got that stony heart that won't let nothing in. Nothing can penetrate that stone. 
because you've already got it all figured out. You know what you want out of life. You know what you want to do. You know, I've had so many people that had the potential to be, be, be discipled. And let me tell you, they hung with me for about the first month. And then after that, when I had to take a hard stand, and I'm talking about lonely people, people who've been looking for love in all the wrong places, and I told them, wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, and even some of them right now may even be posting on Facebook on how they're finally found the right one. And I'm gonna tell you right now, that still ain't the right one. And you could have happiness, or what appears to be happiness for a season, but it's not going to last. And your heart will eventually end up being broken once again and you will be right back all the way from the beginning where you started from. Why? Because I told you back then what God wanted you to do. I told you back then which direction God wanted you to go and you chose to go the opposite. And I can tell you right now that the person that I am speaking to or the persons that I'm speaking to tuned out a long time ago. Verse 20, the anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purpose of his heart. In days to come, you will understand it clearly. I did not send these prophets, yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them, yet they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. Had they really been listening to God, these teachers, then they would have known that God was saying, I want obedience. I want their real love. And the only way they're really going to love me is through their obedience. I don't need people who can wear t-shirts that say they love me. I don't need people who can tattoo on their bodies, I love the Lord. I need people who actually love me. I need people who actually obey me. I need people who are submissive. I need people that want this new heart that I've got to give. I've got, I need people that want this new spirit that I want to put in them. Amen? Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. If you repent, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. If you truly do repent, if you truly allow the Lord to break that heart of stone, if you truly allow the Lord to give you this new spirit, then there's going to be things that people see. There's going to be fruit visible on your tree, on your branches. It's going to be fruit that's not only good looking, it's going to be fruit that is very good tasting. You're going to leave good taste in people's mouths. You know what I mean? You're going to leave and people will not be able to deny the fruits that come with that repentance. You know what I mean? Because you are no longer that stubborn person. You are no longer that person that is doing the opposite of what God says. Amen. And people will be able to see it. There'll be a change of heart. There'll be a newness coming out of you, flowing out of you. Amen. And so if you repent and you make that U-turn in your life, there will be obvious changes and evidences that can be seen in your lives. If you were stubborn and disobedient, then you will be submissive and obedient, that, that'd be the complete turnaround. If you were stubborn and disobedient and God turned it around, then you would become submissive and obedient. There's no such thing as you saying that you've become this new person and you're submissive and you're obedient, but yet you still have that stubbornness that you can't learn anything new. Amen? That's what I wanted to share with you guys tonight. I'm gonna play a song. And God's put it on my heart to pray for a few of you if you end up putting on there that you would like prayer. So as I see your prayer request up there or if you request prayer for your family, as I see it, I will pray for it. Amen. If I don't, then I'm not going to. Amen. So let me just put this song on, get this going.
Here it comes, guys. Every heart that is broken. Father God, we come before you tonight and I pray for the rest of our seed of our I pray for her family, her kids, her parents, her siblings, Father it's God, and her sister in prison, Father God. I pray for Francis Martinez, for her family, for her finances, Father God. Father, I pray tonight, Father God, for each and every single person that was watching this telecast, Father God. I pray that right now in this moment that you would break the hearts of stubbornness, Father God. Father, I pray for Rosie Lopez, Father God, for the three adults in her life, Father God, for their reconciliation with the Lord, for their deliverance and for their salvation, and for the deliverance and salvation of her brother Ray, Father God. Father, I pray tonight, Father God, that those that got the stony hearts, Father God, that those walls would be broken and your fire would purify them. I pray for Bertha Moreno, Father God, that you would pray for her daughter, Father God, her daughter Trish, Father God. Touch her in a mighty way, Father God. Minister to them, Father God. Guide them with your wisdom and your knowledge, Father God. It's your prayer in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your prayer in our lungs. Let the Lord breathe the breath of life into you tonight. Put your hands up and worship Him tonight. God bless each and every single one of you guys. Tune in. Go to church tomorrow. 8